I'm Galen Etlin. Thank you so much for being here. It is cold out there. I'm sure you're feeling it. <laughs> Keely Chalmers is here tracking our wintry conditions multiple days in a row now. Yeah, you know, we started off the day with some snow out there, a little bit of light snow falling across the area this morning, but that has moved out. Now we're actually getting some blue skies, but I'll tell you what, those temperatures still very, very chilly. We're actually at 34 here in the metro area, which is about one degree warmer than I initially thought earlier today. So things starting to warm up. Let's take a look at um, radar and you can clearly see that that snow that we had kind of those just light snow showers we had moving through this morning, moving out even the snow down out there along I-84 uh, just east of the Dows starting to dissipate and kind of break apart as this system moves out. So as that happens, we are seeing some breaks in the clouds as well, a little bit more sunshine. And we're at 37 right now out at the coast, so things starting to warm up, but it is going to be a chilly day. Here's a look at your weather headlines for today. Clouds clear briefly. It is going to be breezy this afternoon. Those winds pick up a little bit of afternoon sunshine highs around freezing, although we're already a couple degrees above it. And we do have the potential for snow and freezing drizzle arriving tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning, about seven o'clock, but it looks like it will end late morning. We'll talk more about that and kind of break down the timeline for you coming up in your full forecast. Galen. All good to know. Not over yet. Keely, thank you so much. Well, at least one person is dead from this cold weather. The Multnomah County Medical Examiner says someone in Portland died of hypothermia on Christmas Day. Our Pat Doris shares what we know about that case and what's being done now to prevent more deaths. Even before the snow fell, even before the temperatures crashed, Someone in the greater Portland area was outside, unable to help themselves, and died from the cold. It's exactly what Multnomah County leaders worried about as they opened emergency warming shelters. But with a twist, much of their warning had focused on protecting the homeless. But the person who died December 25th had housing. Still, they were found outside. The county's health officer, Dr. Jennifer Vine, said last week those suffering outside from hypothermia may appear drunk. It looks like confusion, clumsiness, slurred speech, and stumbling. And as the body gets colder, what starts as confusion and clumsiness progresses to passing out. So I want to emphasize the importance of not assuming someone is just intoxicated and needs to be left alone. County Chair Deborah Kafori urged each of us to be on the lookout. It's still an appeal that is relevant. Please, please make an effort to check on your neighbors throughout this cold snap knock on their door, make a call or send a text. Let them know when you're going to the store, ask how you can help. And if you think that you might need help, please do not be afraid to ask for it. Now, it turns out all three metro area counties have warming shelters open 24 hours right now. And you can find a list linked on our website, KGW.com. You can also call 211 for information and to connect with a ride. Now to the pandemic here, Washington has a new record of daily COVID-19 cases. The health department confirmed more positive cases were reported on Friday of Christmas Eve than any other day in the pandemic. The state saw more than 6,200 cases that day. That surge is similar to other areas, too, as the highly contagious Omicron variant spreads. Washington hospitalizations are going back up, too, but the number is still much lower than the most recent Delta peak late this summer. Oregon has also seen cases tick back up in the past few weeks, but you can see from this graph that Oregon's daily cases are not spiking as much as Washington yet. We know a lot of you face this challenge here as well. People looking to find out if they've contracted COVID are having a tough time getting tested. There were long lines at the Oregon Convention Center test site in Portland yesterday. Yeah, it just doesn't really make sense what's going on. People who have appointments are still waiting and we're probably upwards of two hours now. And now on one of the worst weather days we've had in a while, people having to stand out here. I can't imagine somebody having actual symptoms because that's, yeah. Weather concerns caused OHSU to close its drive through testing site at the Portland Expo Center all week. Other testing sites are still open, though, and we've got a link to those on KGW.com. And because of the increase in cases, health leaders in both Oregon and Washington want you to be careful with your New Year's Eve plans. We want to move into 2022, but as you are commemorating, as you're celebrating it, celebrate responsibly. You know all the things that you can do to keep yourself and your loved ones protected. Let's do those things. 
Health experts ask if you do go to a large celebration, do what you can in the week or so afterward to avoid close contact with people who are at higher risk. We learned one of Portland's biggest New Year's celebrations, the Champagne Ball, has been canceled this year. Too many unknowns. We had questions about a new variant and the possibility of that and how that would impact uh, attendance. And then staffing issues. It's a very tight labor market right now. Now, a New Year's Eve cruise on the Portland Spirit is still happening, but anyone going will need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. Oregon's biggest universities will require students to have their COVID booster for winter term, and Oregon State jumped on board announcing that requirement yesterday as well. Our Alma McCarty has more about this change and Oregon's race to get more people an extra dose. The latest public health push, in addition to the standard COVID precautions, centers around booster shots. Over the last week, as more and more cases of the Omicron variant were discovered, experts I spoke with shared this advice. The state has already looked to really increase the number of boosters. I think that's a great, um, a great idea. Um, the boosters certainly are, are going to help prevent the most severe disease. If they haven't gotten their booster shots, we definitely want them to get their booster shots as well. In terms of Omicron, what we know in terms of protection is it's going to take a booster to give you that same level of protection that you had a month or two ago with your two doses. Oregon Governor Kate Brown set a goal of getting one million more people boosted by the end of January. Tuesday, the state reported another 845,000 still need to get the extra dose in order to meet that goal. To date, we have over a million Oregonians have received a, a booster dose. So that's good news, but our goal is to get another million Oregonians uh, in the next several weeks. And we're trying to pull out all the stops, distribute vaccine to as many pharmacies and clinics as possible. On Tuesday, Oregon State University joined the University of Oregon in planning for in-person instruction and mandating boosters. U of O announced the update to the vaccine requirement last week, ahead of the January 3rd start of winter term. OSU wants all eligible students and staff to go ahead and get the booster shot as soon as possible, along with a COVID-19 test. Students and employees will provide uh, proof of their vaccination status and their eligibility to, uh, to receive a booster shots. Portland State University will not require booster shots, but strongly encourages everyone to get them. Along with testing services, boosters will be available on campus. These kinds of rules do encourage at least some to go ahead and get the shot, according to researchers at the University of Oregon. The mandates for vaccination have been very effective. Um, while, you know, it's not a, a complete game changer, we did see that 10% of the people that got vaccinated was because of the mandates in the state. We're now following some developing news today. The Oregon Health Authority is investigating three cases of a dangerous infection called Candida auris. It's a serious fungal infection that's often resistant to antifungal medicines and has never been found in Oregon before this. All three cases were among patients at Salem Health in the last couple of weeks. We do not know how they got infected, but we do know one of the patients had previously been treated for this internationally, and the other two were close contacts of that person. Salem Health is notifying anyone who may have been exposed.